It's launch day for Big Bertha and a few others. Welcome to Hacker Week. Yep, today is launch day, which means balance out the rocket day. And we're gonna talk about that center of pressure, center of gravity, things like that. And what they all mean to each other for a stable flight. A rocket basically has a center of pressure and a center of gravity. Center of gravity is where it balances, you know, on a, like this. So if it's ready to fly with an engine in place, the recovery wadding in there, the parachute all stuffed in, you find the center of gravity, okay? That's the CG. Now the center of pressure is somewhere, ideally, back here, and that's where all of the aerodynamic forces end up centered. So what I mean by that is if this was in flight like this, zooming along, the resistance would tend to make it wanna go straight if the center of gravity is forward of the center of pressure. These two get close to each other, then you end up with a, a very unstable rocket that will go like this and go in loops. You've probably seen some launches like that where someone didn't balance out the model. Some of these come with a lump of clay that you're supposed to put up in the nose cone and balance it out. You do the swing test to do that is the simplest way to do it. So today I'm going to do that with Big Bertha. We're going to put an engine in here, probably like a, a B engine. Uh, I'm going to get the recovery wad in, a parachute in, and then I've got a string I'm going to put around here, find the center of gravity. We're going to tape that in place, take it outside, and we're going to swing it around. And if it's a stable bird, it will go like this. It won't tumble like this end over end. If it does that, then we need to add weight to the nose. Here we go. I'll be doing this procedure on, let's see, four rockets today before I go out to the launch site. I wanna make sure they're all good. So, um, first thing I'm gonna do is pack the chute in this. So I'm gonna pull this all back out of here. I had it just stashed in there before. We need to put some recovery wadding in here. This is uh, flame-proof wadding that you can get from SD Sand. It's not just toilet paper. It's actually got a flame retardant on it. Looks like tissue, but it's special stuff. We're going to stuff that down in there. Make sure it's enough to just tightly fit snug, not too tight, into the body. The chute. We're going to take the chute out. And I'm going to take this and just crumple it on purpose just to kind of get some wrinkles in it. Because if you do that, if you do that right before launch, it kind of helps it spring open a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm going to give this a quick fold up. And then one more time over, I'm going to grab all the shrouds here. And I'm going to put them up inside. I'm going to fold that one more time and then start rolling this up. And I'm going to just turn it into a cylinder that I'm going to push right down into the body tube. And about that much slack. So let's get the shock cord out of the way. Push this down in. Put the parachute in. Shock cord next. Gonna bundle that up, put it all in there as one little wad. That's the simplest way to do it, it seems. Get the nose cone in. We're ready to find the balance point. Okay, now we need to put a engine in, a B64. This is now launch ready, other than an igniter and an ignition source. All right, I've got a loop with a slip knot on my piece of string. Let's just start somewhere around here. After a while, you get to know about where the balance point is going to be ahead of time. So we're looking for the place where everything stays level. Still a little heavy in the nose. We're going to move it towards the nose. There's the spot. Let's put a piece of tape on that. 
Now we can take it outdoors and swing it around like a madman. Okay, again, when I swing this overhead, I'm gonna swing it around like this, and it should fly like this, not tumble like this or waver around. It might take a couple of revolutions to stabilize, but we'll know right away if we're balanced. Nose first, just like it should. So that's good balanced. That's a well-balanced rocket. This should fly straight and true. Well, I say that's testament to Big Bertha's inherently stable design. It's just a good, solid rocket design. They always fly well. I've never had one go wonky on me. So that one's ready to go. Now I have a few more that I want to balance out, but I want to do the X-15 and share that one with you because this thing is, is really bizarre where the CG ended up and such. This one is going to fly on an A34T. I'm going to put this in so that I get a proper balance. And I'm just going to double check the payload section I think I already have a parachute and wadding in there. Yes, there is wadding in there. There's a chute. I'll repack that before flight, but for now it all goes back in and we can find the CG on this now with an engine installed. First thing I'm going to do is balance it on an edge on a ruler and get an idea where the CG is that way. I seem to recall I balanced this but I'm going to check it again anyway. Yeah, it's right about there. It's roughly where the CG is. And it's right about at the center of effort of the lift on the wings, which is interesting. So that's where the CG is. Flying inverted, but there it is balanced. Let's go swing it. I'm going to get it started in the right direction. I'm going to go this way, maybe. maybe. This way. this way is easier. Look, it's, it's stable. It's not tumbling. Amazing. This might just fly okay. First one up is the Supernova. This is going to be my sounding rocket for the day to get an idea of what it's like up there. There's just the tiniest little bit of breeze coming out of the southwest. Just barely. Um, once in a while I feel it. Clouds overhead are fairly still, so let's go. This is the launch of the supernova. In five, four, three, two, one. Nice straight flight. We shoot the planet. Nice flight. Everything uh, went well. All recovered well. Let's move on to the next one. Big Bertha's on the pad, ready to go. You get uh, the launch pad view on this one. Flying with a B64. Armed and ready in five, four, three, two, one. Lovely. Nice and straight, nice apogee. We got a shoot coming down close by. Fully recovered, and I get bonus points for catching both the rocket and the recovery wadding. Then it barely deployed at that, and it blew the nose cone apart. Experimental. Protostar is on the pad. We're ready to go. We have a D12-5 in there, and I'm going to try to track this one as I launch it. That's always tricky. All right. We have deployment of a chute. And it looks like it might uh, end up pretty close to the launch site. Excellent. It's coming home. Ah, oh, yes. Captured. <laughs> that shows you what the wadding goes through. It was barely hanging on the end there. Shoots in good shape. Nice. What a great, excellent maiden voyage that was. Well, three fully successful flights, one successful test flight. Uh, 
the wadding did not pop out of here like it should have. It got stuck for some reason. And flames came past it anyway, and they did melt my poor little orange parachute. It's now stuck together. Too bad, so sad. We'll put another parachute on this, and we might try adding more nose cone weight and see if maybe we can get this thing to um, straighten up and fly right, as it were. So I'm just going to take this parachute off. So back out here at the uh, launch site again. Um, before when I launched the X-15, it tumbled. It went up, it tumbled, it came down, it hit the ground, and then the chute deployed. But because it was on the ground and the nose cone was blocked, it didn't pop out properly, it fried the chute. I made a new parachute out of ripstop nylon. I've got it on the pad now. I added quite a bit of weight to the nose, moved the CG forward, and we'll see what happens. There's not too much fin area on this thing. It was not meant to be a rocket. It's actually a supersonic experimental aircraft. But uh, let's give it a launch and see what happens this time. I'm gonna try tracking this. It's a little tricky because basically I'm holding the camera to my face and moving my head up along with the camera. And here we go in three, two, one. Not good, <laughs> not good. And uh, yeah, it's just not gonna happen, I don't think. Well, let's go check it out. Well, the chute came out. <laughs> Fortunately, unfortunately, it wasn't up in the sky. Survived the crash pretty well. Um, well, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this to fly. Apogee has tried making one of these models, and they do have one available, but it's got a whole lot of extra fin area on the back, on the tail, to make it fly right. But if nothing else, this is a really cool 3D printed model of one of my favorite experimental airplanes ever. Well, that was fun. I'm glad you could come along. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a pretty nice follow-up to see the big Bertha fly very nicely, nice and straight. Next up, next video is going to be the SR-2061 Sasha, a Russian rocket. So be sure to watch out for that one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that Estes link down there below and buy yourself a rocket and build it and launch it because it's fun. It's a lot of fun. You learn about physics too. Opposite and equal reactions and all that stuff. Newton's, Newton, Newton's laws. Newton, the guy with the apple and all that. Not apple computer, not that Newton. Anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that Estes link and go buy yourself a rocket. It's fun. Until next time.